What's up YouTube? This is Lizard State One here, and today I'm going to show you how to downgrade your iDevice from 4.2.1 or 4.3 to 4.x, whether it be 4.1, 4.1.1, 4.0, whatever, you get the deal. So this is for Windows users only. I'm remaking this video from the old video that I've made where I just stuck my video camera in front of a computer and kind of went from there. But today I'm remaking it using my iMac using parallels so I could use ScreenFlow to actually record it so you get some nice clear footage here. So what we need for this is your iDevice, of course, your computer, and your cable. Now, this version is different from the Mac version. If you want, if, if you want to do this with a Mac, uh, click on the annotation right here, and that'll take you to the Mac version of this because it's a little bit different and easier, in my opinion. So, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is plug in your iDevice here. Now, if your iTunes doesn't automatically sync and back up your iDevice, you can do so manually by right-clicking on your device and choosing Back Up. So while it's backing up, what we're going to do here is go on to the internet to download some things. So I've got I'm going to put this link in the video description. This is where you're going to get your IPSW files from. So you see here, iPhone, iPad Touch, iPad, Apple TV. Don't worry about the iPad one. What we're going to do here is in this drop down menu here, you're going to find your device and what firmware you want to downgrade to. So if I've got an iPad Touch 2G, we're going to focus on iPad Touch 2G here. If I got an iPhone 4, wherever that is, we're going to focus on iPhone 4 here. But since I've got an iPad Touch 2G here, what we're going to do is we're going to say, for example, I'm going to downgrade to 4.1. You're going to select that and you're going to choose download and it's going to download. Make sure you know where your computer is putting these downloads from or in I should say. So once we've got that we're also going to download something called RecBoot which will come in handy if you ever get an error message during this restore process. So you're simply going to press download RecBoot for Windows. It's going to take you to a site where you could download it from and when we're done with that. I'm just going to quit Firefox for now. And it looks like we're ready to sort of begin um, this sort of process here. So what we're going to do here is I've got several IP addresses in my clipboard and we're going to open up Windows Explorer. We're going to go to the little computer folder here. And you're going to see local disk C. Double click on that, then Windows, and then scroll all the way down to uh, System32. Open up that and you'll see drivers and go to ETC and you see all this stuff here. So what we want to focus on is hosts. Double click on that and you will see this box come up with applications you could choose to open it with. Now yours will be a lot simpler than this. Mine is just combining the applications from Mac with Windows because I'm running parallels. So all we need to do is open it with Notepad right here. You'll see all this stuff. So you're just going to press enter after the last line and paste in these two IP addresses here. Most likely the first one will work, but just in case it doesn't, we need the second one. Now keep in mind that this may require SS H blobs for some devices, but for many devices, it actually does not require SSH blobs. So if you have Windows XP, you could just press Control S and begin the rest of the video. However, if you have Windows 7 or Vista, like I do, what you need to do is press Control A to select all the information, then press Control C to copy it, and then close out this file. Don't save it. What you need to do now is go into the Start menu, go to All Programs, and go to Accessories. And under Notepad, right-click and choose Run as Administrator. Press Control v to paste in all the information there. Now we're going to save it in the same directory by going to File, Save As. Then on the sidebar here, we're going to look for Local Disk, uh, Windows. Scroll down to System32. And then Drivers. And then ETC. And we're going to save it as HO. S T S all lowercase save file type all files choose save it's going to ask you if you want to replace it choose yes we are done modifying the host file we can go ahead and begin the actual downgrade process itself so open iTunes back up right here and what we're going to do is put your iDevice into something known as DFU mode so in order to do that what we need to do is slide to power off the device so I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to wait for mine to power off. 
And what we need to do here is hold the sleep button for three seconds, then continue to hold the sleep and home for 10 more seconds, then release the sleep, and then keep holding the home until iTunes gives us a message. So let's do that right now. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Really sleep. One, two. We don't actually have to count for this. We could just kind of wait for it to load. Okay, and there we go. Now iTunes has given us a message here. And we're just going to press OK. So, right now, what we're going to do is press and hold the shift key and then click the restore button. A little box comes up. Now, this is why we want to find the IPSW file in wherever we saved it. So, I've saved mine to my downloads file. You're going to just choose open and it's going to restore. Now, before I uh, continue on here, if you get error 3194 after pressing the restore button, Here's what you can do to fix that error. Simply close out iTunes, but leave your iDevice in recovery mode or DFU mode. Then open iTunes back up, and you will get this message again. And I'm just going to press X. And press and hold the Shift key once again, and choose Restore, and look for the IPSW file again. Now, if you get an error, error 1500, error 1602, error during the actual process itself, there's a cool feature, or a cool program, I should say, known as RecBoot, which I told you about earlier. So we're going to find that. I saved mine in my downloads, uh, right there, RecBoot, and we're going to right-click on it and extract it. And we're going to extract it to the same directory. just makes things easier. In the RecBoot folder here, you're going to see a bunch of things. What we need to focus on is exit. We're going to double-click on that, choose Run, and the Command Prompt window will come up. And it's actually going to take the uh, device out of recovery and put it back to so normal. So now, as you can see, my iDevice is booting back up to normal. So, uh, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to favorite, comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.